So now that we have hit a new wipe with an escape from Tarkov, I figured it is the perfect time for me to make another guide about the settings within the game. Do keep in mind that this is not some secret sauce formula for you to get more performance. I'm going to explain all the settings and what they do so that you will be able to make an informed decision on what settings you should turn down and what settings you're able to crank up. It'll also include personal preference in the mix in terms of image quality, so keep that in mind as I'm talking about each setting. I will also discuss them in terms of being GPU or CPU bound for some settings, and essentially what that means is, for example, if you have a GPU bound scenario, your GPU is at 100% usage, and by turning the setting down, you should see an increase in performance. The CPU bound scenarios are a bit more complicated than that, but you can simply take it as any scenario that has the GPU being less than 100% usage. There are more complexities to that than just having the GPU less than 100%, but that's a general good basis to see if you're CPU bound. Now that that's laid out though, let's get straight into the settings so you can figure out what is best for you. I went to ground zero and figured I'd show you guys all of this within an offline raid so that you'd be able to see the image comparisons live. So with that, Let's get to it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or within my Discord, which will be linked below. And of course, if it does help you figure out the settings within the game, feel free to, of course, hit all the YouTube buttons, like, subscribe, that sort of thing. But with that, let's get straight into it. There are a couple settings within the game section that you need to keep your eyes on. Automatic RAM Cleaner is the first of those. Long story short, in the testing that I've done over the past half a year, Automatic RAM Cleaner does what it entails, sort of. It will reduce your RAM usage by a couple gigabytes, especially in streets, before you get into the raid. But if you want to trigger this RAM cleaner while you're in raid, you will need to hit escape while you're playing. So for example, if I walk around for a second, I don't think I can get my RAM usage high enough, but just for the sake of demonstration, if I wanted to clear my RAM, I'd have to find cover, press escape, go through a stutter for a little bit, and then once that stutter is completed, you should see your RAM usage dropping dramatically, and then it is purged correctly, so you're able to go on with your day. The reason this is so is because BSG does not want you stuttering in the middle of raid for when the RAM clears, because the program has to quote-unquote stop to then allow all the memory to be purged that is no longer needed, and then resume. So it needs to be able to have a bit of a break, quote unquote, in order to purge stuff that is no longer needed. I recommend automatic RAM cleaner for anybody who is under or at 16 gigabytes of RAM, especially if you have a GPU with a low amount of VRAM due to texture spillover, but that's a whole nother thing we'll get into in a second. If you have a card that say has 10 gigabytes or more of VRAM and 32 gigabytes of RAM, you could probably steer clear of automatic RAM cleaner, but I see very little performance degradation with it on, really only in CPU bound scenarios, so you should be okay to leave this on even if you have that amount as I do, just so that you know that your RAM usage isn't filling up to the brim while you're playing. What only use physical cores does is it removes hyper threading from the game. So for your CPU, almost all CPUs nowadays have hyper threading, which means that for every physical core that they have, they have two threads of commands, you can call it, that both go into the CPU. The second of which being considered a logical processor. By disabling this, this supposedly improves performance by ensuring that everything is being sent straight to the actual physical core, and there's no stopping installing waiting for both tracks to be processed by the single core that is being bombarded by two separate tracks. This is one of those settings that sadly, I cannot tell you if this will improve your performance or not. This is very dependent on your own system, so I highly recommend that you run a couple of raids with it on and see if it helps, and if you don't see any difference, you can leave it off. There has been a lot of issues in the past with this setting not working correctly, so there is a solution to that, forcing it through Process Lasso, and I do have videos on that already if you'd like to check them out. I'll link them in the description below. Everything else here is personal preference and doesn't have any effect on performance at least and we can move ahead over to the graphics section. Here, there is quite a lot, but we'll go through it one step at a time. Screen resolution should always be set to your monitor's native resolution. For me, it's 2560 by 1440p, so I do have that set correctly here. If you're looking for ways to improve your GPU-bound performance, there are other ways to do this than lowering your resolution here, and that comes to the upscalers that we have down here that we'll get to in a minute. Screen mode should always be set to full screen for the best latency possible. The only reason I run borderless is because I like to tab out every 0.2 seconds 
And if you do the same, you might like it at borderless as well. I cannot find any performance improvement with full screen, though there have been some reports of that. But the biggest improvement is to the actual latency of the game. So if you can afford to play in full screen, you should just to improve the responsiveness of the game to your monitor. Aspect ratio can be set to whatever you like. If you want to go trade 24K all over labs, then 4x3 might be for you. But holy crap, do I hate this resolution aspect ratio. Um, yeah, please. Uh, if you're not pro, I would recommend just just uh, just just stick to 16 by 9 and uh, make your life a, a lot better. Supposedly, the stretch aspect ratio allows you to see enemies easier. It allows you to have a quote unquote wider player to hit on your screen. But of course, that is a personal preference thing. If you don't like getting sick while you're playing, you can always just keep this at default and move along. Next, let's move on to the actual settings. Texture quality is a uh, well, an interesting topic. There is a lot to this, and it affects more than just your VRAM, as textures do spill over and sit inside of your RAM, regardless of what texture quality setting you are running, especially if you're playing maps like Streets of Tarkov. For this reason, this setting is heavily dependent on the amount of VRAM you have in your card and the amount of RAM that you have in your system. For those of you, say, like me, who have an 8GB graphics card and have 32GB of RAM, you should be able to get away with this being set to medium on most maps. Streets might be a little bit tricky the longer you're in there, but I tend to be able to get away with it with very little stutter on streets. And if you do have stuttering on streets, you can always enable Streets of Tarkov Lower Reserve. I, dude, I sang this whole thing. This, this, this is way too long of a setting name. <laughs> Essentially what this does is it lowers the texture resolution one down from the setting you have set, specifically for streets too. So for example, if you're like me and can run at medium texture quality on all maps except streets, you can set this on down here and it'll set the low texture quality on streets so that you don't have your VRAM spilling over as often when you're playing, resulting in less stutters and improved gaming performance. Of course, it'll look a bit worse as the textures will now be set to low, but hey, at least there's less stutters. Not to mention, you don't have to go and change the texture quality whenever you want to play streets. It'll just automatically change to a lower resolution so that the game doesn't freak out. However, if you're not like me and you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, I would highly recommend setting this to low to ensure that you are not getting over your 16 gigabytes of RAM limit, especially since you might have a card that has, say, 6 gigabytes of VRAM. I highly, highly recommend, if you can handle the blurriness of low textures, to go to low textures if you are at 6 gigabytes or less of VRAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM. 32 gigabytes of RAM and up, along with about 10 gigabytes of VRAM and up, I'd say you're able to start experimenting and go towards high textures. Just be careful as that can overflow and likely will overflow, especially if you're at that 10 gigabyte uh, low that I said there. On the screen now is a comparison of low, medium, and high textures so you understand what each one looks like. Feel free to pause in the video so you can see each setting and make your own decision from there. Again, my personal recommendation, if you can handle it, is medium. If you don't have enough VRAM and RAM to spare, you'll have to go with low, and high is pretty demanding memory-wise, so only do that if you have a good bit of VRAM and RAM to boot. Shadow quality is next. I made a whole 10-minute video about this exact setting, just discussing its CPU and GPU-bound performance, as people were saying that low shadows had an impact on CPU performance. With that in mind, I do recommend low shadow quality for pretty much everybody, unless you cannot handle the resolution of the shadows. This setting has no effect on the distance of shadows rendering as far as I can tell, as the shadows distance slider that was around about 3-4 to four wipes ago is no longer there. That is now a universal value, and this only affects the resolution of shadows that you see on the ground. I would have loved to show you comparison shots, but I can't set the time to be the exact same per raid, and the shadows constantly move, making it very difficult for me to get actual quality differences to show you guys. I would recommend just sticking too low and avoiding the hassle, as that will allow you some extra GPU bound performance in case you are hitting that point. LOD quality, or level of detail quality, controls how far objects lower their level of detail. So for example, if I set this down to two and begin walking around, you might notice that trees start to pop in at a higher resolution as I walk towards them, or sort of phase in. That change is the level of detail increasing as I approach the tree. This also occurs with objects on the ground and trash, as you'll see as I start walking around. 
So if that pop-in annoys you a lot, you may want to set this a bit higher. Secondarily, if you like sniping and want to see players at a distance, setting this at a higher... What's the word? Setting? Oh my god, I just blanked there. Yeah, setting this at a higher setting allows you to see players further away. In general, this can affect your CPU bound performance a little bit. 2.5 is what I tend to run at, but 3 is good for sniping. Or if you really want long range engagements, 3.5. For me though, 2.5 has not caused me any hassle and reduces a good bit of the pop in that I tend to notice. With that in mind, you might be wondering what overall visibility does, but it controls the rendering of further away distant background objects. This is also useful for sniping to ensure that nothing's popping in and out. And I tend to run this at 1500, so I don't have any issues with this. The performance difference that I was seeing when setting this to different values is essentially mutt. So feel free to set this to whatever you please. However, 400 can cause issues with rendering the backgrounds of certain maps, such as the woods and nuclear silos. So just keep that in mind. My minimum then is 1000, and if you want to make sure you don't have any issues ever, set it to 1500. The next setting is a bit controversial, and I know I get a bit of flack for this sometimes, because I like to run a TAA high anti-aliasing. If you've been wondering what TAA high does, it is temporal anti-aliasing, and it controls the removal of jagged edges or shimmery spots that you see over time. It takes data from several frames and links it together pretty much to ensure that there's as little flickering as possible in the image. As you can tell, if I set from TA high down to off, the difference in shimmeriness is quite apparent. However, it is a decent bit sharper. So if you like having the image super sharp, there are some people who prefer to have anti-aliasing completely off. For me though, the image is just way too sparkly and for example, the Picatinny rail always distracts me when it's sparkling like that. So as a minimum, I recommend FXAA or Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing as it doesn't have too much of a GPU bound performance impact, but it does help to reduce the amount of flickering that you see. It's still apparent, but it does help to get rid of it at least a little bit and it's not as atrocious. It also doesn't introduce any of that blurring that you see with TAA, which I'll switch to now for reference. As you can see, TAA gets rid of a good bit of that shimmering, but it does also get a good bit blurrier, which is why I prefer going to TAA high, even though it does have a small performance impact, so it's a bit clearer of an image while still retaining that nice overall look. It's something that I personally prefer, but if you need the extra GPU bound performance, you can go ahead and switch it to FXAA or off as long as you don't mind the fact that you have a bit more shimmering. The performance difference between these, as far as I can tell though, is quite small. I'll show you, for example, on this, I'm right now I'm at TAA high, and if I go to off, the exact opposite, most, or quote unquote, least graphically intensive, it goes up by a couple FPS on average. So this is sort of a personal preference setting, though it can still have a little bit of an effect on your performance. Oh God, next is resampling. Okay, so, uh, you know, I would talk about this, but long story short, please don't use this to either improve your performance or improve the visual fidelity because, for example, since I'm GPU bound, if I go to two times super sampling, my FPS just, uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't like that that much. Not to mention if you decide to improve your performance in a GPU bound scenario by going to 0.75 downsampling, the image quality is just, it's just bad. It's just bad. So instead of doing that, I highly recommend using one of the upscalers that we'll be talking about now. Now, if you're on a 20, 30, or 40 series NVIDIA graphics card, DLSS or deep learning super sampling is the preferred one that you'll probably want to go with. However, there is a bit of a caveat with it that I'll mention in a second. DLSS and Fidelity Super Resolution, AMD's competitive technology, are both temporal renderers. In the FSR 2.2 and DLSS use data over time to reconstruct the image and upscale it from a lower resolution to give you a better image quality than if you, say, was, was running resampling at a lower resolution or just lowering your resolution here. If you don't have the 20, 30, or 40 series GPU that I mentioned here, everybody else can use AMD's FSR 2.2, 
as that is their competitive technology and it does do a decent job at upscaling, though it does have a lot more flickering than DLSS does. Some people do prefer FSR 2.2 as their upscaler, however, as DLSS is a bit of a blurry implementation in this game. However, I don't recommend running FSR 1.0 ever as it is a spatial upscaler instead of a temporal one, meaning that it only takes the data from one frame, not several, to attempt to upscale the image back to native resolution. That can improve image clarity to an extent, but it does not improve the quality, as there is no blurring from the temporal nature of DLSS, for instance, but the actual image quality and upscaling quality is way worse. I'll have all three on screen uh, over the next 15 seconds or so, so you'll be able to see the difference in image quality and make the image or make the decision for yourself. Keep in mind, the lower you set this, the worse the image quality will be. I will be showing the highest quality at 1440p for each one of these upscalers, so you can make the decision from there. These upscalers are the best way for you to improve GPU bound performance above all of other settings, but do keep in mind they are the thing that hits the image quality the most. So it's kind of a big trade off there that you have to decide for yourself if you want to take. The next setting is HBAO or Horizon Based Ambient Occlusion. What this does, it essentially adds shadows around certain objects to improve their look and feel in the place of the world. So for example, if I set this to off, right? You can clearly see that the model of the gun, for instance, doesn't have any shadowing between the hands and the interacted part. And there's no shadowing inside the mag, no shadowing in the chamber. It's very much static and there isn't very much depth to the image. If I set this to something that adds HBO quite obviously, like high, you'll see that there is now an added shadow around where my hands meet the gun, where my trigger finger is. And also when I take out the mag, there is shadowing inside the mag and the trigger. This can reduce the your ability to see players to an extent, depending on where you are and if horizon-based ambient occlusion applies to that area. It doesn't have too much of an effect if you set it to the lower option. So for example, I like to run at max performance as there's not too much of a performance impact when you're GPU bound, and it still gives you a little bit of the shadowing. It makes it a little bit darker and just has, it, it makes the hands fit better with your gun. I personally like max performance, but it is your personal preference. And if you'd rather just have everything be bright and get the couple extra frames that that gives you, go ahead and do so. But I think having it at max performance just adds a bit more flair to the game and makes your character just feel a bit more grounded inside of it. You can see the effect that this has on the local uh, trash barricades, whatever this is. As you can see, I have it off right now and there's no shadowing around anything. But if I set this back to max performance, It just adds a little bit of shadowing around this just to give it a bit more of a place in the world and makes it look like it's, you know, meant to be there a bit more. It makes it look like it's not just like floating or it gives you a bit more depth to the perception of the object. Now onto SSR or screen space reflections. This mainly comes into play when it's raining, but can slot an effect in game depending on if there are any reflective surfaces. This controls the quality of the reflections within, well, said shiny surfaces and water and the like. If you do not care about this setting and would rather just have it off, you can. But keep in mind there will be no reflections for puddles or water or really anything. I like running this on medium just because it creates a nice reflection on my gun when it's raining and, you know, I'm kind of a fiend for that graphical fidelity stuff. It's okay if you can't afford this setting though, and this is actually one of the first settings that I turn off if I'm struggling for more performance. If you like having the reflections for puddles, water, and the like, feel free to set this at medium or low. Otherwise, I would set this to off. The performance when you're GPU bound isn't that much, but it gets pretty intense as you crank it up to high and ultra. So try to stay to medium to low range. With that, the next thing we have is anisotropic filtering. This controls the clarity of textures when they're viewed at angles that are not straight on. So for example, if I set this to off, I'll let you try to see if you can see the difference in the image. 
If you can't really see the difference, then turning this off might be the way to go for you as it might give you some more performance. That performance being when you are GPU bound. When I go ahead and set this to on instead of off, you should be able to see that the road textures got a lot clearer. I did sacrifice a couple frames in order to do so, but it does help with the clarity of textures and your ability to see things on set textures. I like having this set to on as I think the blurriness is very off-putting, but it is your choice whether to have it on or off. There is also the per texture option, which does help you get a little bit of the performance back that you would otherwise be sacrificing by having it set to on. So it's up to you whether you'd like to do per texture or on. You can see per texture doesn't look too bad, However, on does force it and make it just a little bit clearer versus per texture. If you are struggling with GPU bound performance, you should turn the setting to per texture. And if you really are struggling for performance and need every extra frame, you can set this to off. Per texture will still try to make things clearer at oblique angles while not sacrificing a bunch of performance like on does. And when I say a bunch, I mean, what, three, four frames. And next we go to NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. Now, if you're on an AMD or Intel card, you won't see this, but essentially this is for NVIDIA users to get a snappier experience with less latency within the game. I do recommend having this on for pretty much everybody as this will make the game feel a lot snappier and reduce the latency allowing you to react quicker to things on your screen. There were rumors last wipe about this having your frame rate. However, this seems to be resolved here, and so I can recommend this on again. If there are any changes with this, feel free to subscribe, and I will, of course, let you guys know in community posts about that issue if that ever does pop up again. For now, I can recommend this on pretty safely. On plus boost essentially keeps your clocks higher, so if you'd like to have that, feel free to set that on, but this setting does put a little bit of increased pressure on your CPU. Doesn't affect performance that much in my testing, but if you wanna ensure that it's not putting too much pressure on your CPU when you are CPU bound, say on streets for instance, then you can set it to just on. Feel free to test with this setting though. Of course, sharpness is personal preference. And then the next stuff we have down here, I would recommend pretty much universally to have all of this stuff off. The only things that I can understand are grass shadows, as this can help you spot players more easily inside of grass, and high quality color, which can give you a more increased color value. I can't really see the difference. I, I don't know if I'm partially colorblind or what. If you do see a difference with high quality color checked and you don't see much of a performance impact as I didn't, then feel free to leave it on. And now to the infamous setting that we were having problems with last wipe, which is MIP streaming. Uh, this is one of the things that is, um, is a big no from me right now. What MIP streaming should supposedly do is relieve some of the pressure from your VRAM and RAM by streaming textures in as they're needed, according to the camera's perspective, from your drive. So instead of loading those textures into your VRAM or RAM, it is loaded directly from your drive to your GPU's VRAM buffer and then loaded back out once they're not needed. This supposedly helps decrease your VRAM usage and would help you to run a higher texture quality uh, if it wasn't completely broken. What you're seeing right now is streets at the MIP streaming highest quality settings for, so for example, the buffer size and the disk usage limit set up to max for my PCIe 4.0 Samsung 980 drive. And uh, yeah, it looks like everything's made out of Play-Doh covered in oil. I don't understand why it looks like that. There is a lot of flickering as well in the textures as you can see in the clip too. Dude, why is it? What the? F so I just, I, I mean, I can't recommend this. I mean, this looks awful. And not to mention my VRAM usage isn't that much different either. I mean, it's just... I, 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 I think this is broken. I, I don't know why it's looking like this. Also, sadly, I wasn't recording before this, but when I was in raid with MIP streaming on and the weather changed, the entirety of all of the foliage and everything turned black. I don't know if this is a bug related to MIP streaming or an issue with my graphics drivers, for instance, but I'll make sure to be updating my graphics drivers soon and then testing for this on stream whenever I stream it should be either tonight after this video goes live or every single Friday at roughly 6.30 to 7 p.m. CST. Feel free to check in on those and see how MIP streaming's doing then. I'll make sure to keep it updated in the comments too. So rounding it off now that we've discussed all of these right here is going to be PostFX along with binaural audio. PostFX is almost entirely personal preference. Coming back from the future because I could not speak in that take, the two settings that actually have an impact on frame rate 
as far as post effects goes, is Adaptive Sharpen and Clarity. Both of these options put extra strain on your GPU in order to run. So for example, if you watch my FPS as I disable both Clarity and Adaptive Sharpen, so first I have to set this at zero, and then I have to set Adaptive Sharpen to zero as well. You can see there is a substantial gain in frame rate at the cost of the visual clarity. It is your call if you want to use these settings, but it seems like their impact is fairly universal at any intensity. As long as they're enabled, they have the same sort of impact in frame rate. Keep that in mind when you are choosing your settings for these post FX. The rest you should be free to change without any sort of detriment. And of course, if you want to see the full breakdown of that, you can go ahead and go to my post effects video, which I will also have linked in the description. Finally, the last one is binaural audio. This can have a small, and I mean small, impact on CPU bound performance. But this is one of those settings that is more for your gameplay. So if you like how binaural audio sounds, then you can go ahead and turn this on without any issues performance wise. And uh, that's pretty much it. As far as the video goes, I went through all the settings. If you have any questions about anything in the video or any settings or anything like that, any performance issues, feel free to join the discord. It is linked below. Feel free to ask me any questions you might have or ask the members of our wonderful community. If you liked the video, make sure to, you know, do the normal YouTube stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed this quick comparison that allowed you to make your own decision on what settings you should be choosing for Tarkov instead of me just laying them out for you. For now, I'll see you guys in some more videos and some more testing coming up very, very soon. And this is Clem, clocking out. Later.